Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Alice. I'm glad you called. Oh, you'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. I'm all jammed up. Mm -hmm. Some friend of mine just signed the temperance pledge. But with the people he knows, even without alcohol, he still may wind up half shot. This is Ed Hurley, friends, inviting you to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Carved Ham. And now, The Case of the Carved Ham. It is early Sunday afternoon in New York, and a lovely redhead named Doris Webster gets off the Fifth Avenue bus at 76th Street. As she does, she notices a tall, thin man behind her. He's still behind her at 78th. At 81st, Doris gets a little frightened that the game and stops dead in her tracks, whereupon her shadow almost topples over her. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, lady. I should have looked where I was going. That's the trouble. You did. How's that? You've been following me for the last hour. Me? Listen, mister. I don't know what your game is. I'm sightseeing. Well, do it elsewhere, or I'll call the police. You don't really mean that, baby. Officer! Oh, I guess you do. You want me, lady? Yeah, please. I guess that's my cue to beat it. Been nice knowing you, honey. We must do this more often. Four, one, one, seven, one. Is that you, Stuart? Yeah. It's Doris. I, I got to see you. Well, why? What's the trouble? Well, I, I, I just had a funny experience. I, I, I thought a man was following me. Was he? Well, he might have been only trying to pick me up. At least that's what he claimed. Well, don't worry about it, Doris. You come on over. All right, honey. I'll be there in 20 minutes. You uh, threw at the phone, lady? You. Oh, hi, you beautiful. Imagine bumping into you here. It certainly is a small world. <laughs> a coincidence do it because it wasn't i tell you he was following me. that's ridiculous doris why should he well maybe he's working for santos never in a million years if your boyfriend mr santos knew about me we would have heard from him long before this listen listen Stuart. if, if anything should happen oh, now you're you're talking like a child doris i know i know but well if anything should look there, there's a red leather vanity bench in my bedroom Vanity bench? Yeah, yeah, you can't miss it. It's uh, 24 inches high and about 18 inches wide. Yeah. Yeah, well, if you turn it upside down, you'll see the padding comes out. Inside, you'll find some newspaper clippings. I want you to send those clips to the police. Forget it, darling. Nothing's going to happen. Want to bet? <gasps> what? Who the devil are you? He's the man I've been telling you about. The name is Brian King, honey. What do you want? You. What? Yeah. The fellow I work for would like to see you. Who? Joe Santos. Do it! You can tell Mr. Santos I'm not interested. Maybe you better tell him yourself. Let's go, chum. Take your hands off him. Come on, handsome. I told him you were practically on your way over. Now, you don't want to make a liar out of me, do you? Look out, Stuart! Oh. You were a little late, honey. Stuart. Now, don't give him a second thought, baby. 
He'll be all right. How about a drink, Brian? Don't mind if I do, Sanders. Now, that boy Stewart's no lightweight. Bet I lost five pounds lugging him over here. Thanks. Mm. Still out cold. What do you do for a living? He's an actor. Goes under the name of Stuart Van Dyne. I wonder what Doris sees in him. Uh, he's a pretty good-looking guy. Yeah. They make much better appearance than Santos, huh? <laughs> well, you can't have everything, Santos. After all, you've got the money and the muscles. And don't forget the brain, Brian. Well, you can't prove that by me. What do you mean? I came up here from Kansas City because I heard that you were going to be the biggest operator of gambling joints in New York. So? So, ever since I got here, all you seem to be interested in is that girl Doris Webster and the schmo she's been seeing on the side. By me, that ain't tending to business. Just let me take care of oh. Mr. Stuart Van Dyne oh. first. There's your chance. He's coming oh. too now. Oh. Hello, Palsy. How you feel? Who are you? Joe Santos. Oh. You hear me, huh? Uh, you never should play around with my girl, Stuart. Well, what are you going to do to me? Well, Brian here thinks Doris likes you because you're a good-looking fellow. Well? Well, we fix it so you ain't so good-looking no more. Huh? Mess up that face, Brian, but good. No! Shut up! Oh. Oh. Go on, Brian. You're crazy. What's the matter? Don't they tell you in Kansas City that anybody who works for Santos follows orders? Not that kind, I don't. Vince! Vince! What's the matter, boss? I don't think Mr. King wants to play on our team. Oh, is that so? Wait a minute, Santos. Well? Come here, Stuart. No, King. Oh, no! Second. Yum. I, uh, I'm looking for a Michael Waring, the Falcon. Come in. My name is Webster, Doris Webster. Sit down, Miss Webster. Thanks. Now, what's the problem? Well, uh, a very dear friend of mine has been kidnapped. What's his dear friend's name? Stuart Van Dyne. Did you report it to the police? No. Why not? Because I don't want them involved. You don't want them involved? A man is kidnapped? I didn't say he was kidnapped. I said he disappeared. You said nothing of the sort. I can see I made a big mistake in coming here. Oh, I don't know. Well, I do. I'm sorry to have bothered you, Mr. Waring. Believe me, it won't happen again. Hello, Doris. What do you want? Mr. Santos sent me around to find out whether beauty was only skin deep. Where's Stuart? Where is he? All right, Vince. Here we are, right on cue. Come on, pretty boy. Doris, I... I can't look at him! Take him away! Take him away! <laughs> Who is it? It's Emily, Brian. Open up. Just a second, Emily. All right, get in here. What's the matter, Brian? Who says anything's the matter? Oh, well, you're packing. That's right. We're taking the 1035 back to Kansas City. Why? Because that guy Santos I came here to work for is nuts. What happened? Never mind, Emily. Just take my word for it. He's out of his mind. Well, who would that be? Oh, it's the billboy, honey. I asked him to bring up a package for me. Oh. I'll let him in. No, you get started packing. I'll take care of it. Just a second. All right, son, let's... Oh. Oh, hiya, Sergeant. Well, it's about time, Mr. Waring. I hope I haven't inconvenienced you. As a matter of fact, you have. What's on your mind, Corbett? Sit down and have a cup of coffee. Did you read about a guy named Brian King being gunned yesterday in his hotel? Yeah, I understand the holding his wife. She didn't do it, Mike. Uh, You've got to look out for her interests. Has she asked me? No, she don't know a soul in New York. And whose idea is this? Mine. Yours? <laughs> now, I've heard everything. What's your interest in this? What's her name? Emily. Emily King. 
How come you're so concerned about I it? I just feel sorry for the dame. You sure that's all? Look, can't a guy do a decent thing in his life without everyone being suspicious? All depends on who the guy is. Who does Mrs. King say killed her husband? She don't know. She was in the bedroom packing when Brian got it. What were they doing in New York? Her husband came here to work for Joe Santos. Maybe it didn't pan out because he was in an awful hurry to leave. Did you speak to Santos? Yeah, he denies the whole thing. Claims King was doing fine. And I suppose he has an alibi for the time of the murder. Mm. What do you think? I think if I'm going to prove my unknown client didn't kill her husband, I'd better get started finding the party who did. I'll be seeing you, Sergeant. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Mike Waring, acting at the behest of Sergeant Corbett, undertook to do some private detecting for Emily King. And now, as we find the Falcon, he is making like a private eye. Oh, no, don't tell me. Yes, it's me, Santos. Or should I say I? Anything you say, Mikey's okay with me. Mm-hmm. Sit down. Thanks. Would you like something to drink, maybe? Maybe. Scotch, fine. You, uh... Think you're going to be able to do something for that little girl? What little girl? Brian's wife. How did you know I was working for her? I got ways. Look, Mike, if she needs money, let me know. <laughs> Where's your white beard, Santos? Don't get me wrong, Mike. I give nothing away. You ever stop to think that the party cook killed Brian maybe was trying to kill me? You kidding? Didn't the cops tell you the hotel suite Brian was using was registered in my name? No. Well, it was. I turned it over to Mr. and Mrs. King because they have no place to live in New York. What kind of work did Brian do for you? Oh, little this, little that. You know, that tells me... What's the matter? That picture on the piano. What about it? I think I recognize the lady. Isn't her name Doris Webster? Yeah. <laughs> Certainly is a small world. Where do you know Doris from? Oh, she was up to see me yesterday. About what? Oh, no, Santos, don't tell me you're jealous. I asked you a question, Mike. I suppose you answer one of mine first. Was Doris running around with Brian King? No. Well, I've only got your word. Who's in the next room? Nobody. Don't give me that. I heard something in there. You're crazy. I assure you. See? Here's Look out, one. Santa! <laughs> All the rotten luck. What's the trouble, Angel? Well, if it isn't Mr. Waring. Well, Don, if it isn't. <laughs> it's like I just mentioned to a friend. It certainly is a small world. Yeah. Too small. <laughs> uh, say, that must be a dihedral. Huh? That's the molten joint that's attached to the Finnegan pen. Here, let me show you. Hey, wait a minute. All right, if you don't want your car started. You think you can? Angel, I'm the greatest little Mr. Fix-It in the business. Move over. Well, I've all... Now, if I'm not mistaken, there should be a loose wire under the dash. Mm-hmm. What did I tell you? It's been cut. Exactly. But if we wind the ends together like so, then... Who cut those wires? Me. What was the idea? Well, it was the only way I could think of to arrange this interview. How about a drive around Central Park? Hmm? Get out. Oh, you're not going to make me do that beautiful after all the trouble I went to? Do you want me to call a cop? Well, that's entirely up to you, Doris. But I don't think Joe Santos would approve. Well, if Santos ever finds you talking to me... Oh, I don't think there's any danger of that. At least for a couple of hours. Or haven't you heard? He was shot at 2.30 this afternoon. You're lying. Well, there's no reason to be upset, Angel. The bullet just tore a chunk out of his side. Listen, Waring, what do you want? The murderer of Brian King. I don't know anything about it. I suppose you let me be the judge of that. Now, when was the last time you saw Brian King alive? Yesterday, when he brought Stuart. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting to it. Stuart's the boy you told me was kidnapped. I didn't say he was kidnapped. Oh, please, let's not start that again. I gather Mr. Van Dyne has finally turned up, huh? Yeah. And Brian King was the one who located him. That's one way to put it. What's the connection between you and Stuart? We used to be kind of friendly. What stopped you? Santa's found out about us through Brian King. Oh, so that's the connection. And what did the messages King and uh, Santos do to Stuart? I... I have no idea. Well, suppose you give me Stuart's address and let me find out for myself. Here 
sure this is the right place, Mike? Well, Doris told me Stuart Van Dyne was living in apartment 4E, Sergeant. Mm. Guess he's out. Are you surprised? I don't follow you. Now, Mr. Santos is inclined to be a little on the possessive side. What do you think would happen to anyone who he caught playing around with Doris? Well, mm -hmm. now, where are your keys? I don't like to do this. And whose idea was it for me to get messed up in this business? Who asked me to try and help Emily okay, King? Okay, okay. This one ought to do it. Yeah. Uh, awful dark in here. Light switch ought to be somewhere Keep near... Keep your hands off that switch. What? I've got enough light from the hallway. Oh, no, that's not fair, chum. You can see us and we can't see you. That's tough. But just to make things easier for you, I'll tell you I've got a gun in my hand. You, Stuart Van Dyne. What's it to you? Well, a thought just occurred to me, Stuart, that uh, you'd be no better off than we are if I would... Shut the door, boy, you! Hit the light, Sergeant. I'm warning you! Put him out. Uh, it's too late, friend. No wonder he was sitting alone in the dark. Yeah. Who did that to your face? None of your business. It was Brian King, wasn't it? What if it was? It might explain a lot of things, such as finding you alive and him dead. What did Dara say when she saw you? I'll take care of her, too. Well, you took care of Brian King? Suppose you start answering some of my questions for a change. How did you guys get in here? Simple. Sergeant has a set of skeleton keys. Let's have them. Now, let, let me have, have them, Sergeant. Or would you sooner I took them off your body? I think he means that, Corbett. Okay. Nope. Just drop them on that bureau. I'll pick them up from there. Now, let's see how fast you boys can get to the other side of the room. Come on, hurry up. You're making a mistake, Stuart. Let me worry about that. Where are you going? Out. You're not going to lock us in here. You know, Sergeant, you ought to make a great detective. That's as good a piece of deduction as I've heard in years. Are you coming on that door, Sergeant? I ain't made a dent in it yet. Well, save your knuckles. The squad car will be here in a minute. Were you able to get Doris Webster on the phone? No, oh, her line has been busy. I'll try her again. Okay. You don't think Van Dyne could have gotten to her yet? No, not a chance. When I get my hands on that guy. Hello. Hello, that you, Doris? Who's this? Mike Waring. Mm. Hey, Stewart's looking for you. Hope you got a good strong lock on your door. You're not frightening me. I didn't intend to. That's Joe Santos's department. And Mr. Santos doesn't worry me either. Little Doris can look after herself. You know, it's a funny thing, Doris, but the last time I heard someone say that, the undertaker was round in short order. I hope you have better luck. Who's there? He's me, Doris. Santos? Yeah. Okay, honey, just a second. Come on in, honey. Thanks. Oh, I, I thought you'd be in bed. You mean that bullet? Oh, nothing. Oh, I'll bet it hurt something awful. Here, come on, sit down, honey. I tell you, he's nothing, Doris. You're angry with me, aren't you? Why, I got reason. Oh, I give you my word, honey. That Stuart character didn't mean a thing. You know there's only one man in the world for me. Sure. Oh, come on, honey. Say you forgive me. And if I do? I promise I'll never look at another man again. Until the next time, huh? What do you want me to do? Crawl on my knees? It might be a good idea. Listen, you creep. Who do you think you're talking to, anyway? What's the matter, Doris? You fed up? You're darn right I am. Did you ever get a good look at yourself in a mirror? Oh, I know Santos is not so good looking. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. Sure, I went with Stuart, and there were other guys, too. And there will be again. I wouldn't bet on that. Yeah? Well, I would. You're not afraid of what this actor fellow's story is going to have to say? No. The police will take care of him. Why should they? Because he killed Brian King. Why should he? Because of what King did to his face. You're forgetting something, Doris. I tell King to do this thing. Well, he took a shot at you, too, didn't he? No. That was one of my boys. What? Yeah, Vince. You remember him? Nice, tall fellow. I don't understand. Sure you do, Doris. You are a very smart girl. You killed Brian? That's right. You're crazy. I can't be if the cops think Stuart did it. 
Of course, you could tell him now. Listen, listen, Sandy, I, I swear I wouldn't give you away. Wouldn't you? No, no, if, if I wanted to squeal, there are plenty of other things I know. Come here, baby. Oh, darling, you gotta believe me. Honey, I'll never open my mouth. Yes, I believe <laughs> Wait a minute, Sergeant. I think that's the apartment. Is there a nameplate? Yeah. Uh-huh. Doris Webster. Well, what are you waiting for? I've got a hunch she ain't gonna answer. I wouldn't be surprised if you're right. Well, shall we? By all means. Uh-uh. Take a look at what's hanging from the chandelier. Well, that's one way to get up in the world. Good three feet, I'd say. Might as well have been a mile. All right, let's get it down. Well, that's life for you. But I wonder why she did it. Did what, Sergeant? Commit suicide. Who says it's suicide? I do. You see any sign of a note around? What makes you think there has to be a note every time? The girl was scared. Yeah, so she put a rope around her neck and hung herself. Won't be the first time it happened. No, it doesn't make sense, Sergeant. Take a look at that red leather vanity bench. Yeah, what about it? Well, can't you see it's been torn apart? Look at the condition of the living room. What does that prove? Well, if Doris committed suicide, who took the joint apart? She might have herself. Why? How should I know? Uh, well, maybe I can guess. Doris seemed awfully sure that she could keep Joe Santos in line. Now, how could she do that? I don't know. Well, the obvious answer is that she must have been holding something over his head. I suppose it was hidden in that vanity bench. Why would it have to be in there? It didn't. The point is, wherever it was, Santos must have found it and destroyed it. Well, assuming for the sake of argument he did, I don't see how that makes us any better off. Well, frankly, I don't either, Sergeant. But I'm grasping at straws. Let's hope one of them is enough to break Sandals' neck. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Mike and Sergeant Corbett discovered the body of Doris Webster hanging in her apartment. And now, as we find the aforementioned gentleman, they're breaking the news to Joe Santos, who, surprisingly enough, doesn't seem in the least bit disturbed. Well, what are you going to do? That's life. You seem to be taking it pretty much in your stride, Santos. You expect me to cut my throat? You may want to with that. Because I've got a theory you killed, Doris. You got a theory. You're out of your mind, Mike. I haven't been out of this bed since I was shot. How do you account for those scratches on your face? When I saw you earlier today, there wasn't a mark on you. And don't tell us you cut yourself shaving. Say, Sergeant. Yeah? Has the report come through on the substance under Doris's fingernails? Huh? You know, the stuff you had analyzed. Oh, sure, sure. It was human flesh, wasn't it? Yeah, that, that's right. The doc said it probably came from a man. You know, Santos, they can tell in five minutes who that man was. Oh, you're kidding. Okay, don't believe me. Sergeant? Wait a minute. Well... Suppose I was in Doris' apartment. But were you or weren't you? Yeah. And you did fight with her? Yeah, I tried to keep her from committing suicide. Well, you couldn't have tried very hard. Well, I do the best I can remember. She showed me this afternoon. I'm still weak. Yeah, sure. Well, it may be news to you, Santos, but when people hang themselves, they customarily step off a height. And there was nothing resembling a chair in that bedroom. You're sure of that? Positive. You don't see a red leather vanity bench? You mean... Yeah. Looks like he's got you there, Mike. Remember, you were the one who commented on it? Yes, yeah, so I did. What did you take out of that bench, Santos? Don, you wish you knew. Maybe I can guess. Probably some evidence linking you with a couple of unsolved murders. Yes, it's all no good, Mike. You got to be able to prove it. Not if we can prove you killed Doris Webster. And take it from me, Santos, we can. All right, Sergeant, make like a cop. <laughs> You're not bluffing this time, Mike. No, I'm not, Sergeant. Santos killed both Doris and Brian King. But that's what doesn't make sense. Why should he kill King? The guy was working for him. Oh, yeah, but Santos didn't believe he was working out right. King didn't approve of what Santos forced him to do to Stuart Van Dyne, and he was all for taking a powder. Well, you know Santos. The only time you quit his outfit is the way King did. Well, why did he kill Doris? He was tired of her horsing around. And he couldn't have been exactly crazy about whatever it was she was holding over his head. So he strung her up. That's right. 
And you're probably curious about how I figured that one out. No, no, no. We found Doris hanging three feet off the floor. Well, listen... And that uh, vanity bench Santa's claims she used was only 24 inches high. Now, you tell me how you can step off something two feet high and wind up three feet in the air. All right, if you saw it, why didn't you say something before? What, and spoil your fun? Don't forget, Mike, I'm a typical dumb cop who can't add two and two together without using his fingers. If I claimed I solved a crime, who'd ever believe me? Well, certainly no one who ever listened to a show called The Adventures of the Falcon. Good night, Sergeant. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. This is Ed Hurley, he friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Shopkeeper's Gun. It's Sunday night in New York, and in a midtown hotel room... An ugly smile that is almost a sneer twists the thin lips of stocky Ed Taylor as he looks with bored and sleepy eyes at the young man who is pacing the floor in front of him. Sit down, Conrad. Give your feet a rest. You haven't given me your answer yet. Do I get my money back or don't I? I'll think about it. What's to think? You gave me a rookin'. Either you make good on it or... Oh, what? Do I get my money? Come here, Conrad. What do you want? Tell you something? What? Hey, let go! What's the idea? What are you trying to do? Just taking precautions. Yeah. Here we are. So you brought a gun with you, huh? I wasn't going to use it unless I had to. Had to? To protect myself. Well, now that you don't have any protection, don't you think it's a little dangerous to hang around here? I'll get a lawyer. If a lawyer could do you any good, you wouldn't have come up here throwing your weight around. Now, I hate to keep you because I know you must have things to do. Shall I show you out or throw you out? All right, Taylor. You win this round. I win them all, pal, so you might as well throw in the towel. Unless you want to see what it feels like to get counted out. We'll see about that. Goodbye, Taylor. Ah, you're an old meanie, Taylor. That was no way to treat the fellow. Dumb jerk. He had a gun like you said he would. Yes. I wonder if he'll try anything else. I doubt it. But as long as he doesn't know we're working together, I can always find out. Well, let's see the gun. Here. Thanks. Could you hear all he said in the other room? Yeah. Hmm. 45. Conrad believes in doing things in a big way. He probably won't quit. You'd better have a talk with him tomorrow, see if he's planning anything. Well, maybe it won't be necessary. I've thought of one way I can kill two birds with one stone. Or one bullet. What? You're not going to kill him. No, Taylor, I'm not going to kill him. Well, then? I'm going to kill you. What kind of a gag is that? We... Wait a minute, Moody. Don't point that. Stop it. Are you the owner of this shop? What? I said, are you the owner of this place? Oh, yeah. George Conrad? That's right. How's business? What? I said, how's... Look, turn off that record, will you, so we can talk? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, what were you saying? I said the record business must be pretty good. Why? For you to be able to blow ten grand, Conrad. What? Sick. Who are you? Sergeant Corbett, police department. Police? Well, what, what's the matter? We found your name in Ed Taylor's books. Oh, you've got his books. Can you prove anything? About what? About his swindling. Oh, you think he's a swindler? Of course. Isn't that why you picked him up? Not exactly. Then what? I found a gun, traced it. You bought it a couple of days ago. That's right. What's that it's got to do? It's the gun that killed Taylor. Killed? That's what I said. Oh, so that's it. But surely you don't... Look, if I had anything to do with a shooting, I certainly wouldn't have left my own gun there. Why did you leave your gun there? My Taylor took it away from me. Why did you buy the gun? I thought there might be trouble when I demanded my money. So you admit demanding money, you admit you expected trouble, you admit you went up there with a gun. But I didn't kill him. 
Like I said, I certainly wouldn't have left the gun there. It wasn't left there. It was hidden in a trash barrel in an alley nearby. If the barrel hadn't been accidentally knocked over, the gun probably never would have been discovered. Well, then, all I can say is get out of my way. Hey, Conrad, stop. Hello, Georgie. Shut the door quick. Well, all right. I said shut it. What's the matter? Wait till I lock it. What? Marie, the police are after me. The police? Why, what did you do? Somebody killed Taylor. Oh, no. They think it was me. I admitted I had a row with him. But you didn't kill him. Of course not, but how am I going to prove it? Well, if you didn't do but it... But I was there. The bullet was from my gun. It was. But how could it? Taylor got it away from me. I don't know what happened after that. I begged you not to get a gun. All right, you were right. Let's not go into that now. What am I going to do? Well, first, you'd better give yourself up. I can't. I got too much on me. But running away will only make it look worse. Well, I can't help it. Oh, please, Georgie. You wouldn't listen to me before. Listen to me now. Don't be crazy. Give yourself up. We'll get a good lawyer and maybe a detective. No. Well, what do you hope to get? Who's that? I don't know. Uh, who is it? Sergeant Corbett, police department, open up. They're here? Yes. Don't let them in. Well, I've got we to. We know you're in there, Conrad. If you don't want any trouble, you'll give yourself up. Marie, the building next door is the same height as this one, isn't it? Yes, but what do you... I can get up the fire escape to the roof. Oh, no, they'll have the building surrounded. They'll shoot it's you. It's my only chance. Now, Georgie, please. I've got to try it. Then I've got to try this. <laughs> Hello? Oh, uh, hello. I, uh, I'm looking for Michael Waring's apartment, the Falcon. You found it. Are you he? That's right. Well, I'm Marie Cameron. I phoned you a little while ago. Oh, yes. Come in. Thank you. Now, since you called, I've been doing some research. The story's in the paper. And... Part of it. I want to give you the rest. All right. Go ahead. Well, do you prefer to be called Falcon or Mr. Waring? I'll settle for Mike. All right. But in that case, you'd better call me Marie. All right, Marie. Now, what did you want to tell me? I turned Georgie into the police because I know he's innocent. Can't think of a better reason. Oh, I mean it. I was afraid if he tried to escape, they'd shoot him. But now that I've gotten him into this jam, you've got to get him out of it. They're pretty good at making up other people's minds. But he's innocent. And you're such a good detective. Am I? So I hear. Well, you just keep listening to that kind of talk. I will if you live up to it. <laughs> I'll try now, what makes you so sure Conrad is innocent? I know him. You also know he bought a gun. Don't tell me he was just going to use it as a paperweight. He bought that for self-defense. Oh, sure. Whoever heard of guns for anything else? You think he killed Taylor? His gun did. Oh, but that's just it. Can't you see how convenient it was that the trash can was turned over so the gun could be found? It was a plant. Maybe. According to the paper, Conrad claims Taylor got the gun away from him in a fight. But it didn't say what the fight was about, do you know? Yes, that's why I wanted to see you. Taylor was a swindler. He sold Georgie an interest in a fake silver mining project. How did Georgie find out it was fake? Mr. Moody told him. Well, who's Moody? Oh, the man who introduced Georgie to Taylor. Oh. And when he found out Taylor was a crook, he felt terrible about it and told Georgie right away, but Georgie had already invested. Is Moody a friend of Georgie's? No, they met on a train, I think. Mm -hmm. Where can I find Moody? Well, I don't know, but I guess Georgie would. Why, what do you want him for? Do you think Moody can help you? Maybe in a number of ways. So if I'm going to help you, I'd better get moving. Where are you going? To jail. Hello, Georgine. Who are you? Mike Waring. Haven't I heard that name somewhere before? I hope so. What do you want? Well, perhaps you could tell me how to find Frank Moody. Why? Well, he might know something about this murder. What makes you think so? Well, Marie tells me that... Marie. Marie! What have you got to do with her? I'm working for her. In fact... Get I... out of here. Now, look, George. I said get out. Now, take it easy, George. She's Georgie. made enough trouble. Yeah, well, so have you. Oh. All right, Georgie, get up. Sorry I had to slug you, but you asked for it. I don't want any help from Marie. All right, all right. But there's no use trying to throw me out. I can't get out of here even if I want to until they make with the key. Oh, yeah. I didn't think. Though I noticed. 
Very interesting. What is? The way you blow your top. Could explain what happened to Taylor. That's right. Tell me I killed him. See the kind of help Marie gets me? I don't say you killed Taylor, but the police do. And you seem determined to build up a case for them. Now, maybe I can help you out of this. But I'm going to need your help. Now, do I get it, or do you like bars in a window? I don't want any help from Marie. I'm not Marie. You're working for her? I'm working for whoever pays me. If you want to pick up the check, fight it out with her. Do you think you can do anything for me, Waring? Probably, if I can find Moody. I don't know where he's staying. He always called me. Oh, fine. But I don't think he knows anything about it. He was Taylor's come on, wasn't he? No. He introduced us. Well, that's what I mean. But I'm sure they weren't working together. Why, it was Moody who told me Taylor was a crook. That's right. After you had invested. Even so. And it was Moody who suggested that you buy a gun, wasn't it? To protect myself, yeah. Yeah, sure. In fact, it was following Moody's advice that landed you right where you are. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Well, you better start thinking. Are you suggesting Moody's the murderer? I'm just suggesting it's worth looking into. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I had an idea it was somebody else who'd been swindled by Taylor. But the way you lined things up... You mean the way Moody has lined you up? If only I could tell you where to find him. Well, didn't he ever say anything that might give a lead? Not that I can think of. Well, come on, think hard. As though your life depended upon it. Because there's a good chance it does. <laughs> This is Ed Hurley, he friends. Well, it sounds as though Mike and George Conrad are going to have to think pretty hard to find Moody. Yes, the way you have to think when you want to find a way to make good use of those leftover pieces of yesterday's roast. But making use of leftovers isn't hard at all if you make Velveeta your handy helper. You can melt Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese food for a smooth golden cheese sauce to pour over those leftovers for a brand new hot main dish. And this Velveeta sauce is so easy to make. All you do is melt a half pound of Velveeta in the top of your double boiler. You don't have to cut Velveeta up because it melts so easily and so smoothly without any lumps. Then just stir in a quarter cup of milk, season to your taste, and there you have the smoothest golden cheese sauce ever. Just the thing to pour over leftover bits of meat or seafood or vegetables for a main dish that really tastes good, extra good, because Velveeta has such a rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And this sauce is extra nourishing, too, because Velveeta is so rich in important food values from milk. Make it your handy helper, Mother, for easy hot main dishes and for hearty snacks and sandwiches, too. Tomorrow, get a two-pound loaf of the pasteurized processed cheese food of top quality, genuine... Velveeta. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Ten minutes have passed since Mike Waring had his talk with Georgie Conrad. Now, the Falcon drops into the Homicide Bureau to have a talk with Sergeant Corbett. Hello, Corbett. Well, you've done it again. Oh, you, Waring. What have I done? With your usual brilliant logic, you've locked up the wrong guy. If you're talking about Georgie Conrad... Who else? Now, don't tell me you've pulled any other boners. Boner? <laughs> yeah, you're right, Waring. Conrad is undoubtedly innocent. That's why he pulled a sprint when I questioned him. Well, he's impulsive, that's all. Sure, he runs for cover when he sees a badge. This kind of impulse I don't go for. Doesn't prove anything. Doesn't have to with all the rest we have on him. You could be wrong. I'm willing to be shown. What have you got? The character who got Conrad into this, Frank Moody. What about him? Well, that's what I want to ask you. You have anything on him? Just that he's a name Conrad gave me. He has no record. He has no address. If that's your hot lead... I'd like to have a talk with him. Go ahead. All you have to do is find him. Well, I was counting on an assist from you. If he drops in, I'll let you know. Oh, you're too good to me. Think nothing of it. Believe me, Corbett, I don't. Hello? Hello, Marie. This is Mike Waring. Oh, yes, Mike. What is it? Did you ever meet Frank Moody with Georgie? Uh, once. Well, once is enough if you remember him. Oh, I think I would if I saw him again. Good. How soon can you get here? Where? The Hollis Hotel. Is Moody there? That's what I want you to tell me. I'll be right over. Well, 
Mike. Uh, hello, Marine. Come on over here. We can sit down. You can watch the people as they go through the lobby. All right. But what makes you think I'll see Moody? I check with Taylor's apartment house. All outgoing calls go through the desk there, and the clerk writes down the numbers. Taylor made five calls to this hotel the last few days before he was killed. And you think he was calling Moody? He was calling somebody. Could have been Moody. Did you ask for Moody at the desk? No, oh, naturally. They say there's nobody here by that name. But who says he used his right name? Well, how long do you expect me to sit here? Until you see Moody. It may take all day. Well, all right, if you want to help Georgie. Oh, do you think Moody can help? I wouldn't be surprised. But suppose he's checked out, or suppose it isn't Moody who Taylor was calling. Well, you can't always play a sure thing, Angel. You're the one who said I have to clear Georgie. Now, if you can't spare the time... I'm willing. I just hope it... Hey, wait a minute. There he is. Where? Uh, uh, waiting for the elevator. Good. I'll join him. And it didn't even take five minutes. <laughs> Are you kidding? This is the third lead I've tracked down, and it's the first one that was even hot enough to call you in on. I'll be seeing you, Marie. <laughs> Maureen. I beg your pardon? I said, hello, Moody. My name is Morrison. Let your friends call you Moody. Who are you? What do you want? Mike Waring. I'm a friend of Georgie Conrad. Hurry up. Hey, excuse me. Oh, that's all right, friend. I'm right with you. What do you want with me, Waring? A tie-up with Taylor. And... I had no tie-up with him. You led Conrad to him. <laughs> I'm admitting nothing. Well, it's easy to prove. Conrad won't be the only one you sucked in. Ought to be plenty of people to identify you. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Mm -hmm. And now, are you finished, or do you care to come in? Oh, I haven't even started. I'll come in. Very well. You're what they call a private eye, aren't you? Also Dick, Seamus, Flatfoot for Hire, a Snooper, a Hawkshaw. Shall I go on? I get the idea. How did you find me? Well, with those credentials, what do you expect? At any rate, you're a step ahead of the police. They haven't been here yet. That's good. Is it? As long as we can keep you a step ahead. I didn't want to be connected with this, and you're going to tell me how you found out so that I can wipe out the connection. You'll have to wipe me out, too. You begin to get the idea. Don't reach for a gun. Not as long as you beat me to it. I'd hate you to think I'm a copycat. Now, you'll just raise your hands. That's it. Rocky, Rocky! You want me, Mr. Moody? Oh, who's our friend? Michael Waring. The Falcon? Oh, is that what they call him? It must be wonderful to be educated like you are, Rocky. Well, let's clip the Falcon's talons, hmm? What? Frisk him for a rod. Oh. No, he's clean. Hmm. It was rather careless of you, Waring, coming here without a gun. Well, I can't see what good it would do me. You have a point. Now what, Mr. Moody? Tie him up. Okay. Shall I gag him? Won't be necessary. One sound out of him, and he knows you'll shut him up. You better be tied up, because you and I are going to have to make plans. And while we're doing it, we don't want the Falcon flying away. Well, Waring, how do you feel? Fit to be untied. Oh, you and your boy had your confab? Yes, Waring. So... I have things to do. Rocky will keep you company. So long. Uh, take care of him, Rocky. Yeah. You sure walked into something, mister. Yeah. But maybe I'll get out of it. Moody doesn't seem very smart. Who says so? He should have kept up his bluff. This rough stuff just clinches things against him. Yeah, but who knows about it except you? And you're not gonna talk. There's only one way to shut me up. He knows that. Let the police know I'm working on this case. Anything happens to me, they'll know it's tied to the Taylor murder. So what? So what becomes of the frame Moody had worked out for Conrad? Conrad's in the pokey now, so that clears him of anything that happens to me. You don't give Moody credit. You think he didn't think of that? Doesn't look like it. So the frame against Conrad falls. Might anyway with him hollering for him. But the question is, who framed him, huh? And what's Moody's answer? What's the matter with Conrad's girl? Marie? Yeah, she turned him in. Who's to say she didn't do it to protect herself? Oh, so that's it. That's it. And then she hires you to make it look like she's innocent. But uh, you stumble onto something, so she has to get rid of you, too. I see. She's not in stir, so anything that happens to you will fit right into the picture. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I've got to apologize to Moody. I underestimated him. You're the one who's playing it dumb. Me? Yeah. How do you figure that? Well, Moody's obviously a character who likes to go it alone. He gets rid of anybody who knows too much about him. Or with whom he has to split. Little blood, more or less, doesn't mean a thing to him. How long do you think it's going to be before he gives you a dose of same? Well, he, he wouldn't. Well, maybe not. But if I were you, I wouldn't sleep so good. As soon as he decides you aren't necessary to him anymore... Shut up. Okay, just think it over. You're crazy. And not as crazy as Taylor. He thought he and Moody were partners. Look what happened to him. I said shut up. No. All right, Rocky. You don't want to face it. I suppose uh, you expect me to let you go, huh? It would be the smart thing to do. Yeah. Well, even if Moody is like you say, what's to stop me from clearing out before he gets back and leaving you here? Nothing. Except that when Moody gets through with me, don't you think he'll go gunning for you? But uh, if I let you go so you can finish Moody, what's to stop you from coming after me? Nothing. But my heart wouldn't be in it as much as Moody's. Well, I'll have to think it over. You do that. And think fast, because when Moody gets back, he'll be calling the shots. And I've got an idea he has one labeled for each of us. This is Ed Hurley here again, friends. Well, I should say Rocky will have to think fast if he's going to get Mike and himself out of this predicament. As fast as you have to think when unexpected company comes and you have to fix something to eat in a hurry. Of course, if you have a two-pound loaf of Velveeta in your refrigerator, your problem is solved. Because in a matter of minutes, you can slice Kraft's delicious pasteurized processed cheese food and make golden brown grilled cheese sandwiches your guests will really go for. And no wonder. Velveeta has such a fine, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And Velveeta sandwiches are as wholesome a snack as you could want because Velveeta is rich in important food values from milk and as digestible as milk itself. Make Velveeta your handy helper, won't you? For delicious, wholesome snacks and fine hot dishes, too, get genuine Velveeta tomorrow. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. It's a few minutes since Mike tried to convince Rocky that he was on the wrong team. Rocky is thinking it over, and he's still thinking when the door opens and Moody returns. Well, Rocky, I just talked to Conrad's girl on the telephone. She fell for it nicely. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I asked her to meet you in half an hour at Roper's Grill. Now, when she gets there, here's what I want you to tell her. Uh, just you... a minute, Moody. What's that right over there? Where, Waring? In the corner, on the desk. Looks like a telephone to Stay me. Stay out of this, Waring. Oh, I can't help wondering why you had to go out the phone with one right here in the room. Yeah. Uh, was it because there was something you didn't want Rocky to hear? Couldn't it be something I didn't want you to hear? Well, considering your plans for me, doesn't seem likely. Yeah, how about that, Mr. Moody? Don't be silly, Rocky. And how come you're asking Rocky to meet Marie? Why not meet her yourself? I told you to stay out of this, Waring. Uh, that's the trouble with tagging a guy for the big sleep. It's a one-way ticket for me anyway, so why should I take orders? Because you can go out fast or you can go out slow. If you insist upon being annoying, there's still time for Rocky to make you quite uncomfortable. No, I don't think so. I have an idea Rocky is interested in what I have to say. Rocky will do what I tell him. For instance, why are you having him meet the girl in a public place? That's enough, Waring. Is it because you want them to be seen together? Of course not. It makes it very convenient. Rocky, show Waring it's impolite to interrupt. Or are you really having the girl meet him there? Why are you lying to Rocky? Rocky, are you, you going said to do... you talk to the girl on the phone. I happen to know that's impossible. Rocky, for the last time... Why is it impossible, Waring? Because she couldn't be reached by phone. How do you know? Because right now she's downstairs in the lobby of this hotel. Don't listen to him, Rocky. Can't you see what he's trying to do? Can you prove what you said, Wary? Go see for yourself. It'll only take a minute. Stay where you are, Rocky. He asked a lot of questions, Moody. You didn't answer. I don't have to answer to him. Well, then answer me. Well, that's your attitude. <laughs> Here's your answer. Hey. Uh, drop your gun. Oh, Rocky. Sitting there with a gun in your hand, and you let him beat you to the drawer. Well, I didn't think you... I said drop that gun. Sure, Moody, like so. Stupid fool, making me do that. People will be coming. That's right, Moody. Well, you can stop gloating, Waring. That means I've got to take care of you right now. Well, Moody, at least give me time to... Do this! Hey! How did you... Rocky was a fool, not a complete fool. Now I'll take the gun. No, you don't. All right, then I'll do this. Go! Oh.
Well, you see, Corbett, Moody didn't know my hands were untied, and that gave me a chance to jump him. You mean you talked Rocky into switching to your side, Waring? Well, not entirely, but I had him worried. So he untied me and sat behind me with a gun in his hand. He wanted to see which way the cards lay, and he was ready to play either side. Uh Uh-huh. But when he found out that Moody was double-crossing him, he was too slow on the draw. Oh, by the way, uh, now that you've got Moody, did you get him to talk? Yeah, yeah, he signed a statement. Good. (laughs) I was guessing it is double-cross. Did he fill in the details? Yeah, you were right about him not calling the girl. He just wanted Rocky to go out asking for her in order to establish a connection between her and Rocky. So that if anything happened to either one, the other would be blamed. Right. Well, one thing you've got to say for Moody, he's a guy who went all out. And you were overlooking him from my little dope like Conrad. Who says I was overlooking him? Oh, come now, Corbett. I tried to steer you to Moody, but you couldn't see it. Sure, I got rocks in my head. Well, now that you mention it... Waring. Yeah, Corbett. Who did all the legwork tracking down Moody? Hmm? Who got lassoed by a thug and nearly wound up with a bullet in his insides? What are you trying to prove? Who's sitting across the table from me right now with a shiner the size of a grapefruit, which he got risking life and limb disarming a desperate killer, who he has to turn over to me when he gets him disarmed? Well, uh, well all the time, dopey me can't think of anything but rest my feet in my desk and wonder what to do. Oh, now, wait a minute. Yeah, wearing, I got rocks in my head. You're the smart boy. You know something? That suits me just fine. Good night, genius. <laughs> This is Mike Waring, friends, and I have something very important to talk to you about. It's your safety in an air raid. What? Can't happen here? Well, heaven knows we hope it never will. But we can't be sure, so we've got to be prepared. Yes, you, me, and every man and woman and child must know what to do to protect himself. There are official civil defense air raid instructions everyone should learn by heart. If you can't get these instruction sheets from your local civil defense office, send five cents in coin or stamps to Superintendent of Documents, Washington, D.C. You got that? Superintendent of Documents, Washington, D.C. And be sure to learn these air raid safety rules by heart. You never can tell. They may save your life. The case of the missing miss. The case of the missing miss. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon. When Mike Waring learns that when you're playing games, the best place to play hide and seek is the morgue. So be sure to listen at the same time next week to another exciting adventure of the Falcon. Brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. The adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake. Produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Jerome Epstein, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Ken Lynch as Sergeant Corbett. Be sure to hear the great Gildersleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. In next Wednesday's broadcast, Gildy comes face to face with an hilarious problem and solves it in a way that will keep you laughing for days. Remember the show, the time, and the place. The Great Gildersleeve, next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. Check your local newspaper for time of broadcast. This is Ed Hurley. He's speaking for the Kraft Foods Company. Tonight here, Light Up the Sky, presented by Theater Guild on NBC.